Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Kirkendall. Nice to have everybody here. And uh, I'm grateful you're all here. And I wanted to just talk about, um, just kind of take a moment to look around at everybody in this room. We have some amazing different people. We have many different archetypes of people in here. We have the performer, you know, we have the healer, we have the doctor archetype, we have the, the dancer and fire artist, we have the sage. And we just, you know, like Jenna Jasso, she is the spiritual networker, kind of like a Jonathan Gray, you know, just brings all these people together. And I just love that about our community. And we have such an amazing community. And the reason um, I was excited to, to show you tonight is, you know, my archetype, I like to call it a spacesuit repairman. And, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, we are all on a soul's journey. We all have a spirit uh, mission here that, to fulfill in my belief system. And I believe that if our physical body, our spaceship suit is not functioning properly, we essentially don't live very long on this planet. And so we all know that we need to take care of our body. We need to eat certain foods and all that stuff. But above and beyond, there's a lot of things that we don't know that's actually going on with our body. So with this type of work, it can be very powerful to help you identify what that is. And so this is about becoming powerful in your life and discovering the things that you uh, have been missing. And my story is I got really sick when I was 18. Um, I'd eaten terribly and um, I'd been on antibiotics for, for skin and that sort of stuff, for acne. And it turned out that um, basically my entire digestive system had shut down and I started to get really depressed. So I was on, I think, three or four different uh, you know, antidepressants. I got to where I couldn't tie my shoes. Everything in my body hurt and I was in such pain. I was to the point I just didn't want to live anymore. So it was gotten to the point where I just wanted to kill myself. And my mother, you know, was taking me to all these doctors and trying to help me. And I was like, I'm, at, I'm done. Like, I'm super done. It's been two years, and I don't want to live anymore. But she took me into this one gentleman who's a uh, chiropractic neurologist and an applied kinesiologist like myself. And this guy had a totally different approach. And he really started to talk about, you know, how is it that um, we're sick and the four primary reasons of why we get sick, which I'll go through here in a minute, but I wanted to just explain a little bit about that. And after that, um, I got so passionate about it, about 18, I went into chiropractic school because that was his background and started to specialize in applied kinesiology, which I'll demonstrate here in a minute. Some of you may have seen it, some of it, I want to demystify it a little bit and show if it's used properly can really be a powerful diagnostic tool. It is a skill, but also an art, in an art form. So now, fast forward 10 years later, I've treated 50,000 people now, and, um, and I'm grateful for the work, and I'm so passionate about it because people are dying for this information. You know, we only represent 4.5% of the population of the entire Earth, uh, planet America, but we consume 80% of the pharmaceuticals. Wrap your head around that. You know, we've got more of the most comfortable beds in the world, but we have more sleep disorder. And we've got more of abundance, you know, gross domestic happiness is way down, you know. People are just not happy. And I'm just like, what's missing? So what I like to look like, uh, think about is we're, you know, we're on a journey through life and we have a backpack on. And my job is to help you identify what the biggest ba rocks in your backpack are, okay? And so... You could go and take all these different rocks out, but if you don't take the big boulders out first, it doesn't really matter. If you have a primary infection or an autoimmune issue that you haven't dealt with, then none of that's gonna even matter in the first place. So my goal is through applied kinesiology and all the different types of approaches to identify that faster. But again, I wanna state the reason I'm talking about this is all of us here, I believe, are here to express our life mission, our inner light, and it's kinda after working with so many people we just have this inner light, and really it's just all the onion layers of all this stuff of resentment and sadness and grief and doubt, and do I trust to be uh, an artist, like we were talking a minute ago? Am I willing to be vulnerable? And my question to myself and my statement to myself is how dare I not be? If we're actually here doing our life mission, how can we not trust ourselves? And that's powerful, I believe. And, you know, all of us here, let's remember that we are all powerful. And our community is such a powerful, awesome, growing thing here. We get really stuck in the awesome bubble, and I think we just have so much at our disposable that, uh, disposal that most places in the world just simply don't have. 
So I want you to just gather that, like, the love in this room and the amazing creators in this room. And so this is my thing. I can't sing you a song or draw you an amazing painting, but I can certainly, I can certainly do the, you know, this type of work. So <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to say I don't treat disease. I don't need to. For me, that's an old paradigm. If you get hit by a car or get you know, stuck in the back with a spear, don't come see me. Go to the emergency room. That's the first step. You know, I treat people. I, treat, I don't treat their diagnosis. So people come in and they have MS, they have Parkinson's, they have all these things. It's like, okay, that's, that's important, but that's not, that's not my goal is to treat that. I'm not here to treat your thyroid. Let's remove the things that are interfering with the natural flow of the river in your life. Because most of it is the river's going to flow and the wind's going to blow. We can go to sleep. It's going to keep doing that. I mean, that's the cool thing about this planet. It's just this sentient living thing. The main thing is we got to get the stuff out of the river. <laughs> All the things that are in the river that are blocking you up. So that's kind of that's my approach to that. And you need to know when you're going to call the fire department or you're going to call a skilled carpenter. You know, if the fire is, uh, house is on fire, you, what are you going to do? Don't call, don't call me, the carpenter or the painter call the fire department that are going to bang down the windows and knock out the doors and you're going to be eternally grateful because they just saved the structure of your home. Things are going to be kind of damaged, but they have saved your home, which is the emergency room. Thank God for the, the medical establishment for that. And, but you don't keep calling the fire department when you've got the house that's now been torn apart. We need to rebuild it. You know, we need to put, and I think it's the us and them kind of mentality that's really creating separation in the world whether it's in the form of music or art or medicine. And we need to know that there, these are just different artisans that we need to call on. So we need to allow our medical brothers to understand that we're here in support, you know, not against. It's not us and them. We have to understand that there's this is a whole symphony of this, this human body and all the different layers of the body. So that's kind of my belief system around that, you know. So in the uh, office, before I get started, I'll pull somebody out of the audience. Anybody think about like a shoulder issue? And if anybody has a shoulder issue, okay. <laughs> and so, um, but, but um, you know, in my office, we're gonna do like blood work. We're gonna thoroughly look at every level of your body through blood work, and it's the most comprehensive blood you're gonna have. Uh, hormone, if necessary, emotional, uh, neuroemotional technique to evaluate different emotional states all different types of fields, looking at the brain and functional neurology, making sure there's brain balance. So ultimately, the point of this conversation is that if you or your loved one is stuck and they're dealing with a health issue, you don't have to be stuck anymore. There's so much knowledge out there that's available in this field, but I don't think a lot of people know about it, you know? So I wanted to share that. So who in here is struggling with a shoulder? Anybody shoulder stuff? Don't be shy. Cool. We can Zane if you want. Let's do, let's do it. Okay. Come on up. Welcome. So it's it's great because you are the archetype of the warrior, and it literally says on the shirt "Warrior." Can I tell them a little bit about your? Yeah. So uh, have a seat. Actually, yeah, sure. Take your shoes off. Lose the lose the. Uh, awesome bracelet there. Um, actually, Zane, his background is in the military. And so, you know, he's a, what would you call it? Sniper. 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 And so, um, and, and doing that, you know, you have a lot of, um, one, NLP, where boom, you know, you, you're, you're emotional, the trauma of that issue, and then the physical embodiment of it. And so, you know, a lot of people will walk around with this stuff actually embedded in their system neurologically, not just, you know, on the muscle tissue side, but the brain literally has imprinted this emotional aspect, you know, sighting, firing, trauma, carrying everything you've carried. So um, which shoulder? Right shoulder. Right shoulder. So let's do this. So um, I've never actually worked on the shoulders. So that'd be fun. So have a sit here. Wonderful. And face that way. Good, and just do this for me. And so the reason I'm showing you this, this is just the physical aspect, but I wanted to give you a taste of what muscle testing can look like, you know, and how it can be beneficial. So before we start, just bring both of your thumbs above your head like this and touch them together. Good, and I wanna see if your, if your range of motion is de uh, decreased, good. And then let your arms just hang out here. And you said, uh, let, let them just hang. You said right shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. So what we're gonna do is let your arm totally relax. So that's the most important thing, is let this arm just hang. So you're, so you're holding it? Mm -hmm. So I want you to just let it hang. I'm just gonna see, 
the motion that you have in your shoulder. That's good motion. We're going to try this one here. Let this totally relax here. So we're just going to compare. Let me have the whole weight of it. We want to get a baseline for before we start. And this one you can see is a big difference, right? He's got a probably a good, I don't know, 40 degree, you know, degree different here, you know. So let me show you again, let the arm relax. So we can see this guy has got a lot of uh, locked up motion here. So what we want to do is begin to activate and when we're doing this on the muscle level, we want to bring balance. Just like in a sailboat, if a sailboat is heading along this way, if the masts on the sail or the wires are pulled too tight on one side, the boat's going to go off this direction. So we want to bring balance back to, this, back to these muscles and back to the nervous system. So uh, in the office, I use a laser. Um, this is a cold laser. This is a $20,000 piece of equipment that um, really people don't really understand because I never explain it. But right now, we have it on 9, 16, 42, and 53, which is all the muscle, tendon, bone, and ligament frequency. Coherent light carries coherent information. And so by putting this on his body, we're actually carrying coherent information to stimulate and upregulate on this side of the body, which affects, obviously, opposite cortex, right? So let me show you here. So we know that we've got decreased range of motion. Bring your arms straight out in front of you like Frankenstein. Good, and now bring them up. Let's just see if there's any decreased range of motion. Any pain there? Mm -hmm. No? Was there any pain when we brought it out and abducted out this way? No. Like, no, there Slightly. wasn't? Slightly. Slightly. He's tough too, so that's good. So what we want to do is we want you to sit real proud like a warrior, which shouldn't be hard, right? And then externally get the chest out, let the arm here. And we're just going to go through and check some different things. Before we begin that, let me just quickly test his arm. So elbow straight for me and resist my pressure. So resist my pressure. We're going to go through and I'll just show you what's possible with a joint. That's the anterior deltoid. Hold there. Supraspinatus in the elbow here. Good. There you go. You're doing great. Middle deltoid. Posterior deltoid. Hold there. Drop the arm down like this. Doing really great. Elbow locked out. Good. Don't let me move. Latissimus. Serratus anticus. Elbow straight there. Hold. Good. Let's check any of the muscles here because, again, if any of them are failing, he's going to go back right into pain. If you do massage, I love massage. Whoa, see how weak that is? Mm -hmm. We're going to fix that when you lay down. That's his pec minor. is really fatigued, okay? So if we adjust this gentleman, which is great, and we do muscle release work, that's great, but that muscle is not firing. It's called autogenic inhibition. If that muscle's turned off, this thing's going to keep coming back on him, and we're never going to get the thing fixed. So we want to, we want to turn it back on. So first things first, let's do this. Um, let's get the range of motion increased. So let the arm drop again, chest out. I'm going to turn the laser back on. And so what I want you to do is I want you to just take a deep breath in and out. And what we're doing is we're just actually um, stimulating applying a lot of proprioceptive input into his left cortex and into the shoulder girdle and again let the right shoulder drop out and then again breath in and this is to show you how immediate some of this stuff can be because we can get range of motion back so quick this is called quantum neurology you know in the medical world they say well your shoulder's just not going to do that anymore a neurologist may do some neurological feedback but with quantum neurology um, what we do is we stimulate the brain and we stimulate over the area of injury. And I can explain more about the lights later if you guys want to know because it looks a little different. Um, but light therapy is powerful. It's very powerful. This light actually, let this arm relax here, bud. Totally light relaxed again. Good. We get full range of motion. Whoa, yeah. See the difference? So quick. And so with quantum neurology and applied kinesiology, you can get really, really fast results, which is really cr crucial, right? So let's do a little further. So that's pretty good, right? So let me show you here. Yeah. Woo! You know, you know what's really cool? I just got to say about this guy, I've only known him for a short bit, but this guy is, I would call it, you, you had an awakening in recent years, or recent months. Yeah, and now know. he's going back to do a kind of a defensive type position overseas because uh, he's no longer active duty, right? Or, yeah, but, but he's kind of private hire. But, but this guy is going back to tell these military brothers <laughs> some of the toughest of the tough 
like there is another way. And this guy is just this big heart, man. Love and we're, we're having a, a lot of military, a lot of military waking up. And that's the whole uh, us and them game that we're losing. We need to shed that. We need to shed the, oh, he's a, he's a cop and I'm a this, you know, or it's, they're all the same. We're all the same. That's the whole thing. So, yeah, and this guy, I just am excited for you to actually go back and share this with some of the toughest, baddest dudes on the planet because I, I, that's your archetype. I would never have that ability. You know what I'm saying? You're, so a, love, you're a love child and you're a healer. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the knowledge, what, you know, what he's brought to the table, I don't mean to steal the show at all, no, what no. he's brought to the table you know, has definitely, definitely you know, changed me. And it's Sweet. given me so many, so many avenues to do that, you know, to help cool, him. Man. So. Well, thank, thank you, you for, yeah. yeah. So uh, right shoulder. So let's do this. Let's make it so it's easier for everybody to see. So why don't we put your head over here and lay with your head here, feet there. And I'll just kind of clean up the rest of what's available to clean up on the shoulder. So let's check. So applied kinesiology is using muscle testing. Uh, resist my pressure. Hold. And remember just to not push but equally resist me. Hold. If you use it improperly, it's really not good. You know, if you use it very properly and you're neutral, it's powerful. Hold there. So I'm going to go through and muscle test. So what I'm going to do is we're going to find a muscle that's autogenically facilitated, meaning it's turned on. So his anterior deltoid on his right shoulder works well. And I go through on touch different areas on his body, we'll find certain areas weaken him. If I touch over this pineal point, he'll weaken very easily, right? So you shouldn't weaken. He's a strong dude. He could squish me pretty quick. Like, crushing your head, right? <laughs> so I just want to explain this muscle testing to demystify the magic of it because it's really not a mystical thing. It's a neurological thing. So for example, we are electrical. And the way God set up the rules is we eat a Twinkie or we eat an apple. Somehow those, energy, those electrons, they turn into energy and run ATP in the body. And the ATP runs your atrioventricular and your sinoatrial node of your heart. You run this beat all the time. So just like this little magic ball from Austin's finest toy joy, um, when we complete the circuit, the ball is programmed to do light and sound. That's it. It's not a Mac, but it's, it'll do. So I want to show you that we are electrical beings. And so if you were to put your fingers in an outlet on a wall, as long as you don't complete the circuit, you don't get electrocuted. But if you complete the circuit, you fry your bacon, right? So if the heart stops, we would run paddles and zzz, clear, and we've seen it on doc Dr. House and all that. And so we want to recognize that we are electrical beings. So I'm looking for where there's an electron gain or an electron uh, drain. So for example, we'll have you hold this little ball. Good. So he's holding the positive in. I'm going to hold the negative diode. And anywhere I touch on his body, as long as we complete electron circuit, uh, it'll, it'll actually fi fire up the ball. Does it make sense? And you could do this with a million and one people. It's electron flow, no matter how how many people, it just instantly flows, which is really super cool. So I'm going to put this out of here because this just keeps awesome weirder. So, <laughs> so we're going to do this. So, so again, we're on the positive diode. Hold there. Elbow straight. Muscles fine. I'm going to go through and just start touching things in your body. So I'll ask about lung, pancreas, kidney. And so this is called quick scan. Uh, liver, gallbladder stomach, you know, that kind of thing. We can find anywhere on his body where he's weakening. You know, you can find digestive issues. You can do this with emotional stuff. Let me actually have you with your, um, let's touch this right arm, turn this here, right? We gotta be accurate. Watch how he's turning, because it's fatiguing, so we wanna be accurate. So I'm gonna touch over the shoulder, because he complains of that. Hold there for me. And you weaken really strong, do you see that? So I want you to put your left hand over your forehead. This is called two-pointing. We're asking, it was weak in the clear. Now how if we touch the emotional points? Hold there. He strengthens. So for him, there could be an emotional concomitant with this injury. And I would be shocked if there wasn't, right? Because it could be an issue that is a muscular issue, a, 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 a tendon issue. But for him, above and beyond just that weak muscle that we found and the lack of range of motion, there's an emotional piece. So do you mind if we go a little bit into that? Go ahead. He's like, oh, man, I didn't know we were going to this. Hit her there. Hold her. Last time he had me bawling up my, my eyes out. So. <laughs> so hold here. We'll keep it light tonight. Hold there for me. So strong. Now, the importance of this is that this is important. It's an art form just like anything. But when we run blood chemistry, when we do diagnostics, I'm not going to get into that, but brain diagnostics using eyes, you can be specific. So this can be helpful for people with stroke, people with autoimmune disease, people with brain injury, people with blood sugar disorders, anything that you can imagine 
as long as you're applying it to the individual. And again, we don't need to treat the disease. We just find out, oh, the block is in the shoulder. We remove the shoulder block, and then we don't, we don't have to worry about the rest. Does that make sense? Kind of different approach. So hold here. Good. We're going to touch over the shoulder. He's going to weaken. I want you to put your hand back on your forehead. Hold there. Very strong. So it says there's an emotional concomitant. So there's three things in life. Uh, well, four in the emotional uh, category of this. So money, job, finances, career. We're asking there. Concept of love. Concept of self. Concept of love. Concept of love. So people you love. Who are the people in your life that you love? Who's, who pops into mind first? Mom, dad? Love. <laughs> so here we go. So love. <laughs> You're doing good. Uh, Stay with me. So love. And so is there somebody, when I say the word love, that pops into your mind? Yeah. And, and do you, do you want to share quietly the name? We don't have to get too much in it. No, you know how. Uh, um, okay. Okay. So <laughs> concept of girlfriend. Right? Yeah. Okay. Concept of the girlfriend. So hold there. Concept of the girlfriend. So um, I want you to say, I'm okay, we'll, we'll just say Rach. How's that? I'm okay with Rach. I'm okay with Rach. Good. So I'm okay with Rach. So when we say I'm okay with, say I'm okay with Rachel again. I'm okay with Rachel. Okay. When we go through that, we find weakness. So let's two point, let's ask. Let's say I'm okay with Rachel. I'm okay with Rachel. I'm okay with Rachel. I'm okay with Rachel. Concept of the emotion, resentment. So resentment with Rachel. Resentment with Rachel. What would be a resentment with Rachel? I don't know. What would I resent about the relationship? Yeah. What would we resent about something within yourself? I, well, we can check the concept yeah. of the emotion. So this gets a little different. This gets a little different, but I wanted to show you, you can go down the rabbit hole real fast, right? So concept of your, your resentment, concept of Rachel's resentment. Oh, there's, there, so it's not even on your side. The resentment of Rachel. So what might she be resentful for? Ask me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, when a relationship... A line. Hmm? So I'm walking a careful line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and, so and a lot of times when we get with people, like they're gonna, some of this stuff is stuff they're not even going to remember or they're going to really struggle with. So we kind of pull it out. So it's never, I'm never in any rush. I just trust the muscle test. That's all we have to do. It's just an energetic thing. And so it's, you know, after doing this for years, I'm just patient with him. Like, oh no, he doesn't know. Because it's in there. We just have to discover a little bit. So hold there. So concept of the resentment that Rachel may have towards you. Resentment towards Rachel would have towards you. So that resentment could be feeling unloved, unsupported, at the end of a relationship with anybody's relationship. Yeah. We'll keep it general. Yeah. Would you say that would be, a, I yeah, mean, absolutely. I want you to kind of, oh, absolutely. kind of get quiet and just feel into it. Don't think, feel in it. What would be the resentment? You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Keep thinking about that. So we'll keep it private, right? I just think that's better uh, and more, more the way this has kind of showed up here. So let's just do this. So I want you to feel her resentment towards you, okay? Let me know when you got that one. Really feel that resentment, the feeling of it, not the vision, the picture. Relax here, this hand here. You got that one? Mm -hmm. Good. So what I want you guys to do, because the point is that we're all connected. That's what's the most amazing thing. I want you just to feel love, because this guy is you, and you are this guy. We are all like these holograms of one another. I think it's just the coolest thing, you know? And so I just want you just to feel love for him where he's at, and being brave enough, being the warrior enough to get up here and do this. And, uh, and so I want you just to feel, for, for you, I want you to feel that resentment that she has towards you. You got that? Mm -hmm. And I want you to really intensify that feeling of that resentment at you. Let me know when you feel that really strongly. Mm -hmm. Good. So, wonderful. And so what I want you to do is I want you to notice where you feel it in your body. You got it. Good. And I want you just to feel it. I want you to take a deep breath in and blow it out.
just release it out of the room. You guys send in love, just feeling love for him. And out. And one more time. And I'm tapping on a very specific part of his brain. It's the postcentral gyrus of the premotor cortex to integrate this information. Okay, just so this makes a little more sense. We can get more into neurology I know later. What it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know, no, I mean, that just dropped in. I know. Did it? Is. Okay. Good. Did you feel like you cleared that one? Maybe. Yeah. But I got an answer. Okay. Me being able to leave. Being able to leave. Yeah. Resents that. Resents that. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. I want you just to, I want you to just really feel that like her resenting you around that yeah, situation. Absolutely. Let me know when you can really feel that one. Intensify right that one. Good. And again, it's resent, so we're over T4. This is a gallbladder channel, right? Breath in and out. And again, and out. Good. All right. So out of all the millions of flavors in the universe that you can choose to feel when you're feeling this feeling resentment, I want you just to feel, what would you prefer to feel in that spot? Love. Yeah. So feel wherever that was before. I want you just to feel this love and you guys continue to feel love for him. Good. Let it flow into your arms, your legs. Good. And when you feel that one's complete, just take your time and you can relax your arms back down. Just take your time though. There's no rush here. So, you know, I wanted to just talk just briefly that there's only four primary reasons that we get sick. And that can be an emotional issue, right? That could be the trauma that you experience in wartime or with your girlfriend, which may be like wartime. I don't know. It depends. <laughs> or it could be a structural issue, which was also an issue for him, right? The range of motion. It could be a toxicity issue. And toxicity could be a virus, a bacteria, uh, a, a metal, a chemical, or it could be a, um, a nutritional issue. And we won't get into each one of these in great detail right now because, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time. But understanding that the nutritional component with glyphosate and our uh, big friends out there in Monsanto land, it's affecting the shikaki gene. It's affecting our ability because it is a mineral um, it's a, basically it blocks the mineral absorption from your body, which is really crazy, especially if we're only growing all of our plants with NPK. And then we're blocking the, the channel uptake of, of minerals. It's like, whoa. So what I'm seeing right now, and it's really concerning to me, is all these healthy, beautiful people coming to my office that can't reproduce, that are having hormonal dysregulation. And I mean, honestly, if a man and woman's inability to actually have a baby is being threatened, we are, we are no longer Team America. We are, we've got a humanitarian problem, and this is what our doctors are seeing right now, and we're extremely concerned. And the amount of plastics and stuff. So start to get serious about it in your life, because I want you guys to be powerful. I don't want a system that we all in here don't really beat our drum to to start to affect us as powerful people. We're not here to work at a cubicle and work for other people. We're here to be powerful, to wake up one another, to be the Jonathan Grays, the spiritual operators, you know, to be, to be bringing us together because we are being called like tribal dynamics to get back to that. And we have a kick butt community here. So I don't want to let that go by uh, you guys tonight. Really recognize where we're at in the epoch of Austin. Like this has never been done before. You know, we've got the technology, the knowledge, the art, the passion. You know, it's it's an exciting time for me. So, um, so I think uh, I think for the most part, this is this is a good time to break and ask questions. You know, um, we're just kind of letting him process. Oh, let me let me fix the muscle here. We'll, we'll fix while we're talking. And and if you'll notice this laser. This is a 635 nanometer laser, so this is a red frequency. And the frequency of a perfect, healthy, functioning cell is actually around that 635 nanometer frequency. And what scientists discovered was that during a cell in utero, in division, in mitosis, there's a little photon of light that's emitted. And it's that frequency that they try to resonate that frequency. So you can program frequencies within it, but it's 635 nanometers, the base of this. So you don't need a lot of light. You don't need a lot of penetration. You'd say, well, that's just on the skin. 
But it's the same thing with a swimming pool. You need a little tiny light to light up the whole thing. It's quantum field. And all of that stuff we're learning about quantum field right now, you can apply it to anything in your life. This is the application of quantum physics in medicine. Just like there's you know, the application of quantum physics in you know, searching for the God particle, the largest, most expensive CERN you know, research project on the planet right now. So it's, you know, it's pretty legit. So let's do this. Let me let your head uh, come out here. So we'll adjust him. So the chiropractic piece, and here's my 20 second chiropractic spiel. Some people say, oh, chiropractic saved my life. Other people, oh, it's not so great. Well, it depends on the individual. You know, if you need essential fatty acids and you take it, it may change your life. But somebody else said, oh, that's, that's snake oil. It's like, no, that's fish oil. But you just didn't need as much of it as somebody else, you know. So it's about being very specific to the individual and what their needs are. And so this kind of work, your family members, yourself, if you need more, if you want to engage me more, it's not about signing people up tonight. Uh, I'm available for you guys, you know? Just like if I want art, this is where I'm going because this is pretty awesome. <laughs> so, so let's just check again um, this muscle. So the chiropractic piece, hold there for me. Hold, hold, hold. So this is his pec major um, clavicular. This is pec major sternal or PMS muscle. Hold there. Oh, it's PMS. I knew it. So it's really weak. <laughs> so this muscle, so we're going to go to the origin insertion. <laughs> And just and, and he's like, ow, this is killing me. So um, he's got a he's got a PMS entrapment. Sounds <laughs> terrible. And so basically, so what we're gonna do is just do. You've seen me kind of mess with the foot a little bit. Is a little bit of injury recall technique to tell the body, hey body, there's been an injury here. And I'm not gonna get into the neurology of this, but it's very quick. And so a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, what's all this stuff? It looks weird. But it can be very very fast if you apply neurology the proper way. Funny side note, I went to the grocery store the other day and I was wearing this thing and it was blinking. And the lady's like, do you know where the peas are at? And I was like, oh, I don't work here. I was like, I have like a checker, you know? It's funny. So let's just see. So we turn the muscle back on. Let me adjust here. And so we're gonna adjust him. So lastly, with the whole chiropractic piece, we have a brain, a beautiful brain. We have a spine, a spinal cord. And all of these wires run out to your liver, your lungs, your heart, your digestive system. They innervate and connect to everything. And so if there's an interference in that, just like another rock in the river, we want to remove that interference. So what would you do? You wouldn't call like a carpenter. You would say, hey, electrician, you know, there's a, the lights are out uh, in the kitchen. So you'd go into the closet and turn the little circuit breaker back on electricity is restored. So for people like uh, him, I'm sure over the years he's had some stuff with uh, neck and carrying stuff. So we're going to gently put the vertebrae back in place, very gentle. So we're going to do one little guy, let your head relax, good, da, 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 da. good, just like that. One more time, breath in and out, good. And so we're just getting that motion going, elbow straight, hold there for me, hold, 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 good. Turn inward, elbow straight, resist my pressure. And what you're hearing, and see the muscles turn back on strong. Hold again. Do you see the difference? No more PMS. <laughs> so what's really, good, what's really good about that is that we're actually turning the whole system back on. So this gentleman's going to go back out and wake up his guys, his brothers out there in the field, and he's going to have more balance. It's not going to keep injuring and having weakness. And it's strong until re-injured, you know? Mortar fire goes off, we're going to have to see again. But, um, but until then, I think you're going to be doing much better. Does anybody have a question? Uh, want to fire anything at me? Yes, ma'am. Hi there. So you have an office here in Austin? Yes. That's great. I'd like to visit. Okay. <laughs> great. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome to that. <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> Any questions at all? I mean, don't be shy. And if no, that's great too. Where do you, where do you learn this? So I started off as a. Yeah. The, the, so the question is, is where on earth did you learn all this? And I kind of went down the rabbit hole of, got getting really sick. I worked for a doctor in San Antonio who saved my life, and this gentleman started to teach me a lot of things. But what I did is I went through the chiropractic training work. And then I started to get it, my diplomate in the neurology stuff and, and, and diplomate in uh, different functional nutritional programs. So there's a lot of additional training that's out there. Quantum neurology is available out there. Um, and so there's a lot of different types of training that's available. I mean, I can share you in detail later if you want for sure. 
but uh, I mean, it's all out there, it's available, but we don't have the budget or, and the system is squashing the knowledge around this because there's so many things that are available to us. But I think a lot of us in the community don't know that it's, there's a lot of science behind this too, and it can be fast. It doesn't all have to be woo-woos and, and crystals. And thank God for that because I'm into that, but that's etheric body. So there's etheric and the emotional body, there's the physical body. So if you approach all levels, it's faster is the point. And it's the science around that. Yes, sir. If you could change one societal habit that you see wrecking us, what would that be? Blood sugar. Yeah. Our primary issue, the solution to pollution is dilution. And if your body is inflamed, the root of all disease is inflammation. And all your cellular information, your thyroid hormones, your cortisol hormone, your leptin, your insulin, they cannot get into the cell with inflammatory processes. Man, it's bad. In the cancer explosion, every time that blood sugar drops, cortisol spikes, cortisol spikes, and, and estrogen spikes. Estrogen causes tissue to grow. Progesterone causes tissue to grow up. Too much estrogen, cancer growth. Let's stop the search for cancer. Let's just start dealing with the issue, you know? Yeah. So follow-up question, what is your opinion In the form of like meats or glandular products for supplements or? In general, how it affects the human body. Well, I think, I mean, that's a great question. And yeah, so the question is, is what do I feel about the animal products? You know, in office, some people need glandulars. Say, for example, their thyroid or their adrenal or pituitary is under functioning. Uh, for some people that muscle test well with it, it can be a lifesaver. So for other people, we'll have an issue emo uh, like, like actually like not wanting to do it because they're vegetarian or vegan. And out of respect for that, we need to support that. But I believe that humans were actually, that humans were actually been born to eat and hunt meat. And the thing about it is today, it's not done in honor. You know, it's not done, I don't think it's done well. And I think they're trying to find a way to feed the masses but ultimately we need to get back to honoring the animal and in a society based around cities and buildings and computers it's hard to do that so I completely understand the question but I also believe that with protein and fat whether animal or otherwise it really does stabilize the blood sugar number one if you don't take anything else stabilize your blood sugar <laughs> yes and then teal yeah go for it oh do you accept insurance um, what we do is we give you a form if you want to do that, and you can bill it yourself. And then they, the best thing I ever did, and hallelujah for it, is I got out of that system. They are trying to tell us what we need to do for you. Is my focus, and I'm affordable, and the guys that do this work are affordable, is to, the focus is to actually get the patient well, you know? And so you can send the form in, and they, they'll, they'll reimburse you, but it's wonderful. I'm not in it. Hallelujah, it's over, that part. Woo! That was like a big win for me. Yes, Teal. You were, uh, you were saying that you don't treat a specific issue necessarily coming with X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. You're more looking at what can you remove. Is yeah. That, is that like so that whatever that system or that channel has can get flowing again? Yeah, whether it's a Chinese meridian system or a hormonal system. Yeah, so the question is again, uh, what... Yeah. Yeah, so we're just removing what's in the way. But then you'd actually support the gland. Just support the gland and, and teach them dietary stuff and actually stimulate the pancreatic uh, gland and those types of things using Chinese, uh, Chinese medicine and, and laser, actually s putting laser light over the, over the pancreas itself, giving enzymes that the pancreas will upregulate and use. And you see things turn around really powerfully quickly. I am like amazed in there. But now I'm after 10 years and 50,000 people, I'm just kind of like, this is what it is, but I need, I need people to, I think people are like wowed by it, but it's really, this isn't tough. So if you guys are excited about it, you can learn it yourself. The world needs it. They really need it. And I, I mean, I certainly can't do it alone, you know? Holy cow, there's so many people that are needing this right now. So thank you, and uh, thanks for all the questions, and I'll be around. If anybody wants to follow up or anything, um, we're going to have Trisha over here at the computer. If anybody is interested, we're going to do a 10% discount on the first visit, which is just helpful. But I want you guys to know I love you, and all of you shine brilliantly. That's what it's about. And before we stop, I just want you guys to feel, just close your eyes for a second. Let's do a quickie. 
I want you just to feel love for everybody in this room. I'll do it too. And how powerful we are when we all come together. And these people that you don't know in this room yet are your best friends you just haven't talked to yet. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.